This is, I'm calling this the art of living big. And over the next 20 minutes or so, you're going to discover seven key principles that are going to help you to create more abundance in your life, more happiness, to live with more purpose, and to be one of those people that we've been hearing so much about the last few days, being one of those people that's alive and just full of passion and moving with the flow of life and feeling really, really good and making a big positive impact in the world. Um, as you've just seen from the, the quick video there, my name's Carl. Um, I've been the copywriter at Mind Valley, but now my, my role, my purpose in life is to work with some of the biggest names on the planet and distill their biggest ideas, their principles. And as I mentioned in the video, the 20% of things they've got, the 20% of ideas and beliefs and strategies, they get 80% of their results. Because I like to fast track my success. I'm lazy inherently, and I, I want to get the, most, the biggest results possible with the smallest amount of time and effort. So over the past six months, I've interviewed 21 of the biggest thought leaders on the planet, from Lisa Nichols and Christy Marie Sheldon and Bob Proctor and John Asarath and Vision and many, many more. My boy Brendan, Brendan Bouchard, cool dudes. And, I mean, imagine, like, I'm the luckiest dude in the world because people pay these guys thousands of dollars for coaching and for their advice, and I get to speak to them for free and quiz them. And NLP uses a term called modeling. You're trying to understand at the deepest level what are the key principles that help them to create this big life. And for me, a big life simply that. It's a life where you feel alive, you're doing great work that you love and you're being well paid for it. You get to achieve all of your goals and you attract the people into your life that you really, really want. You have great relationships and you're happy and you're at peace and you're in flow. And what I've discovered over the past six months is that even though all of these teachers seemingly teach different subjects from abundance mindset to meditation, spirituality, success, peak performance, there's actually commonalities between what they share. Like, it, it, there really are these principles that even though they might use slightly different language or slightly different terms, there's these key principles that run through it. And I've played with these principles and experimented with them, and I found this, this to be the fastest and most effortless way to quickly create a transformation in your life. And I'm going to share these seven principles with you today, freely. But before we do that, I just need to tell you a little bit about my story, because, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, a few years ago, my life was very, very, very different. Like, for me to be on this path now, even involved remotely in this world, is, is totally out of the norm. Um, four years ago, I was completely depressed. I, I was absolutely miserable. I was in a job I hated, didn't have any money, and I got kicked out of the house. I was sharing with a girl I thought I loved at the time. She left me because I was miserable actually miserable. And I just thought, I was one of those people where I thought the world owed me something. And <laughs> believe it or not, it didn't really give me much of, of what I thought I should deserve. And I, used to, I was just having these really dark, dark thoughts. And it culminated with me living on a beanbag on the floor of my best friend's house for months. That's a really pimp beanbag. It wasn't anything like that. It was like a little mini one. And it was one of the coldest winters on record in England. Um, and I was sleeping on this beanbag, and every night I'd sort of slip off it, and I'd, I'd be sleeping on this ice-cold floor, shivering, wearing three or four layers, just saying to myself, life's shit. Would anyone really miss me if I'm gone? And I, I'm afraid to admit it. I had some really dark thoughts, and I was getting to the point where I was like, well, maybe, maybe I, it's just better if I, if I just end this now, because what's the point? Like, nothing is going right for me. Nothing ever will. I was in a very dark place. And this culminated... On New Year's Day, I was going to pick a friend up from uh, a late night diner they were working at. And there was ice on the roads. I was driving to pick them up, and the car sort of skidding on the ice. And I'm having these thoughts like, well, would it be so bad if I careered off the road? Like, would, would anyone genuinely miss me? I pulled up at the diner, and all of the lights are off. I mean, it should be open. And my intuition said to me, don't go in there. And at the time, being completely driven by ego. <laughs> I know better than you, intuition. What the fuck? Shit, I'm going in there. <laughs> so even though there is this deeper part of me, this wisdom that is saying, stop, I approach the door of this diner, and I go in, and it's pitch black, and out of the darkness run two guys with guns. Now, they're holding the place up. I've walked into an armed robbery, now, stupidly, and this will be representative of the kind of state I was in at the time, my conscious mind told me, ah, oh, this is a joke. 
this, this is my friend playing a trick on me. So as a general bit of life advice here outside of the seven principles, if two men point guns at you, do what they say. <laughs> I did not. And um, because I thought it was a joke, <laughs> I stood up to these guys and, and basically told them, you know, F off. They told me to get on the floor as if. So I stood up to two guys with guns. Terrible, terrible idea. Uh, seconds later, they started beating the shit out of me. Guns, hands, um, kicking me on the floor. And at that moment when I was on the floor, it was like my brain kicked in. It was like, shit, this is for real. You need to do what these guys say. So, <laughs> you know, I learned from my lessons. I'm good. I'm good like that. Um, but they locked me in, they, they locked me in this, this small kind of store cupboard in the back of this diner. That's where, the other, where my friend is and the other staff members, and they tie us up, and we can hear them robbing the place. But what really changed my life was that they came back after they got all the money out of the safe. They had a discussion about whether they should, they should kill the Larry one. So in English, if you haven't got the English slang, Larry means ostentatious, loud, rude. That was me. What with the whole calling them out when they had the guns to my face. And I tell you, when there's a couple of guys talking about executing you two feet away from where you are, it creates a certain kind of clarity, or it did for me. And <laughs> questioning your decisions and, uh, and whatnot. But to be honest, I was very peaceful on the floor. It was a very strange experience. And a calm came over me, but I did make a decision at that moment. And that decision was this. Look, if I get out of this, I promise that I'm going to figure out how to, how to live a, a good life, how to be happy, how to be successful, how to not be miserable all the time, how to attract the people that I want. And, I mean, I did. Needless to say, they didn't, they didn't shoot me. Great. That was awesome. Um, <laughs> but then I went out and started studying, trying to figure out what makes people happy. I studied psychology for a bit. It didn't really resonate with me. It seemed to be too focused on the past. And then I discovered personal growth. It totally changed my life. Past four years, I've spent over 100 grand of my own money learning everything from meditation to visualization and NLP and hypnosis and every modality in between, trying to figure it out exactly what it is that makes people happy and successful. That's been my burning desire, for those of you who have read Napoleon Hill's work. The burning desire that captivates my attention has got me up in the morning every day trying to figure out exactly what it is that creates these people who live these larger-than-life lives. And... Now my life is so far removed. I, I'm, I'm incredibly blessed. I mean, I've told you about my job. I mean, you know, I get to interview the best people on the planet and get paid well for it, travel the world. Most of all, I have the most amazing woman in my life, Rebecca. Some of you might have met her. She's on the Awesomeness Fest team. I truly understand the, the truth of behind every successful man is a, is a strong woman, absolutely, for sure. So thank you, love. And uh, yeah, champagne and Jordans. That really makes me happy. <laughs> um, so with no further ado, so that's, that's what triggered me off and that's what sent me on this path. And over the past six months where I've been interviewing these incredible people, I've realized that, that, you know, I sort of meandered my way towards this success. And there was a lot of trial and errors, I'm sure there is for all of you. But from speaking to these highly successful people, I've been able to distill these, these principles. And I've been working with these and teaching them to other people in the big life. And people get extraordinary results really, really quickly with more ease and less effort um, than you can imagine. So I'm going to share these with you now, and these are, for me, the seven key principles for living big. The first one is simply this. You need to have a vision, and you need to be in love with that vision. It needs to captivate you, <laughs> because frankly, if you ain't in love with it, you're not going to get up in the morning, day after day after day, and do what it takes to create or manifest your desires. It needs to speak to your soul, and as Bob Proctor told me, you need to write that down and keep focusing on it again and again and again. A key distinction, it's not enough to know what you don't want. I was really good at saying, oh, I don't want this job, I don't want this relationship, I don't want to be broke. But our unconscious minds can't process negatives very well. So when you say, I don't want to be broke, it's like, I want to be broke, man. And it, it goes out and manifests that for you. So the first thing I'd, I'd invite you to do is, is say to yourself, Am I really head over heels in love with my vision? Like, do I get up in the morning and think, holy shit, this is absolutely, I'm going to commit myself today because this is, this is, I can't imagine anything bigger or better for my life. And if you ain't there yet, I'd invite you to keep asking the questions until you get to that point. For me, it's been a trial and error. Like, you, you go down one path and then you, you take what you like and you let go of what you don't like and so on until eventually you end up somewhere that you truly, truly love and 
yeah, that's, that's the first step. With a vision, you're capable of much bigger and greater things. And if you can make the vision about more than just yourself, all the better. Principle two is to understand that your unconscious mind, your subconscious is really running the show. The latest neuroscience suggests that 95 to 99% of your total resources are at the unconscious level. <laughs> Incredible. 95 to 99%. Most of us spend all of our time consciously setting new goals and going, I'm going to do this, I've got to solve this problem, and we're relying on just 1 to 5% of our total resources. Dr. Bruce Lipton from Stanford University says that it's our subconscious mind that, quote, ultimately cast the deciding vote on how much money you make, how happy you'll be, the kind of relationships you'll attract, the kind of person you are. It's all stored at the subconscious level. And the way your subconscious mind or your subconscious beliefs change is uh, through repetition, through strong emotion, and through sensory-rich imagery, which leads us to step three. And this, for me, is the fastest and easiest, the most fun way to change your subconscious beliefs, and that's to visualize. Now, we've probably all heard about visualization, but you've got to do it right, and, and that is um, you've got to do it with emotion, and you've got to repeat it, and you've got to create this... this, this vision in your mind where you see and you hear and you feel and you touch and you taste every aspect of your vision, which is why, back to step one, you've got to be in love with it, because if you ain't in love with it, you're just not going to be able to imagine it over and over again. Like, visualization bores you, it's because you're dreaming of the wrong thing. Dr. Dr. Maxwell Maltz, in the incredible book Psycho-Cybernetics, which the majority of what we learn now in the personal growth world is based on, says that your subconscious mind cannot tell the difference between what's real and what's imagined. Stop and imagine that for a sec. Your subconscious mind, 95 to 99% of your total resources can be tricked. It can be tricked by simply using your imagination in a focused way. And when you take time to visualize every day, you'll notice that your beliefs start to change at the subconscious level. This is what a lot of these teachers, these incredible teachers on stage have been sharing about being led by synchronicity and flow and feeling a momentum and things become effortless because it's happening at the subconscious level. We're not conscious of what we're doing or even if it's us doing it. But when you change your subconscious beliefs, literally everything changes. Principle four is what happens after that. Because a lot of people stop there. They go, right, I've got a vision and I'm visualizing and I'm going to sit in my house and wait for that Ferrari to show up. <laughs> that never worked for me, to be honest. But what does work is this idea of inspired action. Now, most people talk themselves out of going for their great big vision because they're like, how, how am I going to even start? I don't even know. It, it's, this seems to be so complicated, and of course it is, because from that level of understanding where we're at now, it's impossible to know the myriad, the thousands of steps that are going to take us to where we want to get to. But that's okay, because as Dr. Joe Vitale taught me, the next step is always revealed. If you are focusing on your vision and you're visualizing and you're dreaming of it, your unconscious mind can't help but give you solutions and they will flash in your mind as insights. I like to compare them to apps on your iPhone. When you download an app on your iPhone, you don't need to mess around with it. You don't need to install anything else. You don't need to mess with the settings. You don't need to figure it all out yourself. You press the button, it's downloaded, it's good to go. Same with these insights. They'll flash into your mind and it will be, become clear what you need to do next. That one step for where you need to go next. And all you need to do is honor those ideas with action. The more you honor these ready for you, done for you insights that flash into your mind and put them into action quick, money like speed, success like speed, the quicker you put them into action, the more of them you're going to get and you're going to get in that flow. You don't need to figure out three, five, 10, 20 steps down the line. I mean, it's great to have long-term visions of where you want to go, but understand that they are revealed step by step by step. And all you need to do is keep going, keep flying, keep a smile on your face, and enjoy the adventure, because the adventure is where, where the joy is to be had. Principle five is slightly different. And that is, through all of this chasing dreams and trying to hustle and create this success, we get caught up in the old monkey mind and the ego and if you don't learn how to distance from that voice that's constantly telling you, you should do this, or this is wrong, I need to fix this, then you're going you're gonna to face a lot of unnecessary struggle. For me, meditation, I mean, over, I think, 2,000 studies now prove that meditation has a myriad of benefits for body, mind, and we all know about that. But what's less well publicized is that, for me, meditation is a peak performance tool. When I meditate, I'm more creative, I'm more focused, 
I'm more passionate, I'm in the moment, I get better ideas, I get my hustle on more. I get much better days when I meditate. And of course, you're nicer to be around as well. Your energy changes, people want to help you, they want to be around you because very few people in the world outside of here have got that energy about them where they're cool, they're at peace. And of course, the great paradox that when you're happy now, and of course, meditation increases your well-being and your happiness in the present moment. When you're happy now, without having those millions of dollars or that success or that relationship that you desire that's part of your vision, when you're happy now, paradoxically, it attracts more things to be happy about. Certainly been my experience. And you'll find it easier to actually get all of these things. So stop saying, I'll be happy when. I'll be happy when I've got this. I'll be happy when this changes. Focus instead on being really, really happy in the moment. The easiest way to do it is just meditate for a few minutes. Quiet your mind, the thinker, and realize that that voice that's constantly telling you there's shit wrong, you need to fix this, you need to do that, might not actually be that accurate. Principle six, this was the toughest one for me to learn, but by far the most transformational. And that is, I spent most of my 20s trying to get stuff, trying to get money, trying to get ahead, get successful, get girls, get, 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 get. And even when I got the stuff that I thought I wanted, didn't actually make me happy. Crazy, crazy, didn't make me happy. But then again, Dr. Joe Vitale taught me something very profound. And he said, you can't outgive the universe. Love that idea. You can't outgive the universe. So I switched my focus. So rather than trying to get stuff, I was trying to give all the way. Give value, give service, try and help people, try and inspire people. Give, give, give the things that you want to get. Give money, give time, give energy. Craziest thing happens. One, you feel awesome because when you give freely, it actually raises your energy and you feel happier <laughs> about yourself. But again, another great paradox that the more you give, you do seem to attract more back into your life. You create this vortex of energy which comes back to you in abundance. The Big Life's a great example. It's the first business that I've run purely from this principle. Giving value is absolutely our number one primary aim. We give away 60 minutes or more of free training every single week. And then we sell stuff at the back, sometimes, not all the time. It's going to do a million dollars in sales in its first year, and which for me has been a goal for years. A million dollars from, thank you. <laughs> So I would invite you, if there's one takeaway from this, it's say to yourself, how can I give more value, even more value? Because, I mean, I've met some incredible people here. You're all amazing, inspiring people. But how can you do even more? How can you help even more people, give even more value? Because a lot of people I meet, they're like, well, I'll give some, but I don't want to give too much. You know, I've got to hold a little bit back. But I promise you, when you make that shift to just giving freely, and you know, whatever comes back to me comes back to me, that's cool. You'll be amazed at the disproportion of results that you seem to get back. Because it's so rare, someone who's authentic and giving and helping people. And then people will want to help you. Which leads us to the principle seven. The key principle that ties it all together. And I've got to tell you, I wish it was sexier. I wish, I've, I've tried for months to dream up a way to make this more attractive. And mm, just so you go, yeah, I can, I can get me some of that. It's a daily routine. Every single teacher who I have interviewed has some kind of daily routine, something they do every single day to get them in that state of flow and momentum and focusing on their goals and taking action. And that, for me, has been the biggest change. Like, all of the, the, the vision and giving back, they've all had a huge impact. But if I don't do the shit I need to do in the morning, then it doesn't matter. <laughs> like I'm, I'm off having a, having a crappy day. But when I get up and I meditate and I visualize and I focus on my vision and I show what I'm grateful for and I exercise and I do the, read some inspiring books or listen to a course, which are the things that I've got in my daily routine. Yours can be different, of course. But whatever puts you in that state, that peak state where you're inspired and you're like, yeah, you know what? Life is good. I'm happy. I'm going to have a good day today, which is hard sometimes because our, our ego wants to tell us what's wrong. That's its natural response, trying to fix problems. But when you do this, when you make it a routine, every teacher has told me this, then that's what creates the, it overrides the ego. And it overrides these subconscious sabotage and these blocks. And of course, because you're working on things like meditation, visualization, your unconscious beliefs, it creates this disproportionately large response, which allows you to create more success in less time, with less struggle, less of that hard work, less of that massive action. Of course, you have to move, you have to put energy in, but you don't need to motivate yourself. 
Motivation and willpower are finite resources. They're controlled by the, subcon uh, by the conscious mind. Motivation and willpower. But when you get your unconscious mind on board, which is what the daily routine does, it's all effortless. It becomes who you are. You embody it. And that's when people are attracted to you and they want to help. With all that said, a caveat. I found this quote and I really, really liked it from Joseph Campbell. You enter the forest at the darkest point where there is no path. Where there is a way or a path, it's someone else's path. You're not on your own path. If you follow someone else's way, you're not going to realize your potential. So from the bottom of my heart, these are the principles, the seven ideas that have had the biggest impact on my life and literally tens of thousands of other people who I've helped over the past six months. But I don't want you to feel that they're a prescription that you have to follow to the letter. As a general rule, Joe Campbell also said, follow your bliss. It's a great bit of advice. Follow your bliss. If anything I've said today it inspires you or excites you or it's like, yeah, sure, that sounds like fun, then follow that. That's, that's a good indicator that that's where you should be going. If something doesn't resonate, it's cool. This is not a prescription. Just let it go. It doesn't work for you right now. That's absolutely fine. You've got to figure out your own path, and that requires being authentic and honest and open. You have no doubt noticed that one of the best things about Awesomeness Fest is the people that you meet here, because there are so many people alive and open and honest and authentic. The real world might say you're weird or you're different, but it's the most attractive thing in the world. The weirder you are, the more authentic you are, the more people are going to want to help you, the more successful you're going to become. Because people absolutely love, unconsciously, they absolutely love people who have come alive, who are just being themselves and ain't afraid to express themselves freely. So although... I... Yeah. yeah. So naturally, I've got to finish with a rap-related quote. So to summarize that in a slightly more concise way, from my main man, Russell Simmons, who created Def Jam Music, a number of other big hip-hop brands, and was the co-author or the author of the second best self-help meets hip-hop book of all time, Russell Simmons says, do you. Don't try and do me, don't try and do no one else. Just be yourself, do you, and you'll be amazed at the big life that you can create. Thank you. Yeah.